Ian, take that up and let's let's talk about um, uh, where we are with treatment in terms of what do we have for treatment? How good is it? What are the kind of the first line things that we want to give to people who are who are newly diagnosed and, and, and why do we pick these things? So, so HIV therapy is one of the amazing success stories of, of medicine in the last 20 or 30 years or since you know, 1987. Yeah. Uh, we've got 30 some odd drugs now. Uh, um, uh, but we are using a relative few number. So if we talk about treatment guidelines, there are two main guidelines that we think about, the Department of Health and Human Services and the IAS USA guidelines. Um, they both agree that therapy should start with an integrase inhibitor. I'll talk about some differences among the guidelines in a second. Um, so we're, we're talking about the non-boosted integrase inhibitors, dalutegravir, bictegravir, and raltegravir. Um, the guidelines differ with respect to the nucleoside choices. So um, the IAS USA guidelines say that if you're using a three-drug combination, you should use TAF-FTC together with either bictegravir in the fixed, in the fixed dose formulation of Bictarvi uh, or together with dalutegravir, um, and that's it. Um, Raltegravir is a preferred agent in the DHHS guidelines, but not in IAS USA, probably because it has a lower barrier to resistance. It involves taking a few more pills. Um, there is a new addition to the DHHS guidelines, and that is fixed dose dalutegravir lamivudine. The first two drug combination, one pill, fixed dose combination, the first two drug combination to be a preferred agent. Uh, and we've got comparative studies that now show that uh, uh, dalutegravir lamivudine is as potent as dalutegravir uh, tenofovir FTC. So a two drug combination as potent as a three drug combination. Almost everybody who takes these drugs consistently gets their viral load to an undetectable level. Resistance in people who don't maintain virologic suppression to the integrase inhibitors is uncommon if they're on the second generation integrase Very inhibitors. Good. They're safe. So we've got safe, potent combinations that will work effectively as long as people take them. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. So, so uh, there are some, you know, things that we used to think about a lot. Like we used to think about, well, how high is their viral load, or how low is their CD4? Should we do something differently? And that really doesn't come into play all that much. It does come into play a little bit with our two-drug um, therapy, the the uh, dalutegravir lamivudine that you talked about, which is the Devato. Um, Elson, I don't know. Um, there there are some reasons you might not use that combination, right? The two drug? Yeah, the two drug. <laughs> so I, I take care of a lot of adolescents. <laughs> and so we all, oftentimes they're not as much included in the studies. And yeah. so adolescents will figure out how to break things. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I tend to be a little nervous about using the two drug. Um, they tend to also not have a lot of other, other comorbidities that we need to think about, you know, when thinking about regimens. Um, so I think it's great that we have them. I think particularly as we think about long-term sequelae of being on just your HIV or being on antiretroviral therapy, if you have the opportunity to use less drug, maybe less bone, less kidney, less what have you, I think a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think comorbid conditions are, are part of what you think about. Um, I think, you know, we less, I mean, now we, we don't have to think as much about resistance. We used to really be thinking about how we much resistance we have right in um, initially initiating therapy. We don't really have that much. You know, I can't think of the last time I had somebody coming into care that had pretreatment resistance. And so it's really rare that we're seeing that. Um, I oftentimes think about, you know, pill size used to matter, <laughs> all right? Um, the pills are smaller and smaller and more palatable. Uh, the side effects are minimal. I think, you know, maybe some headache and some nausea that around the beginning, but that tends to go away. I think thinking about, you know, uh, childbearing and, and what goes into the if we're thinking about dalutegravir, for example, um, there are some concerns about neural tube defects and thinking about women of childbearing age and when to use that um, would be important. And then adherence, again, 
even when people are not fully here, we're not seeing a lot of resistance. But we do think about that in sure. terms of the barriers yeah. would be the difference between using a Rao Tegavir based regimen versus using a Dolly Tegavir or a Big Tegavir based regimen. Yeah.